without it. I mean, look, I'm trying to be positive. I mean, I, I thought that the program's good. I, I'm frustrated. I, I'm frustrated because this damn COVID is, this darn COVID is much more intractable than we think. And I think that it drives me crazy that, that, that Wuhan's open. Mm -hmm. Because what they had to do to get Wuhan open was to suppress the amount of civil liberties that it would be unconscionable in our society. But it worked for them. And it's frustrating to me to see the, yeah. uh, a, a, a military, yeah. communist, totalitarian dictatorship win and a democracy just completely ill-suited to win. Yeah, and then, uh, guys, uh, journal piece today about the reopening of Wuhan, a, a rise in new asymptomatic cases that was deleted online, right. as our Eunice Hewn pointed out on Twitter. So uh, it's, I mean, a lot, that's why a lot of charts are ex-China, Jim. We just can't trust what they're saying. No, you can't trust them one bit. And I think that I'm, uh, I think that there are other countries to look to, South Korea, Taiwan. I mean, Taiwan was ready. Okay, now we hear Taiwan's ready for SARS, whatever. I know our market's ready for some good news. And I'm always surprised at how resilient it is, given the fact that we are, uh, unemployment is rising, mortgage numbers were, were bad. Uh, but the credit markets are wide open. I can't believe it was getting a lot of credit. It's incredible. It's very loose. Fed doing its job. <laughs> but the thing that we really do need is we need a general marshal. We need someone who is apolitical. I mean, even, look. Jim, you, when you raise China, I keep coming back to it as well and wondering, uh, as we move along here uh, through, of course, dealing with this virus, right. where we're going to be with China. I mean, we spent so much of the last couple of years talking about our relationship with that country in respect, of course, to the trade dispute between our two countries. Now we've got a virus that originated in Wuhan. Uh, by the way, uh, Huawei not going to be able to get those chips conceivably. Right. That's what we're hearing in terms of the U.S. saying no to Huawei's ability to actually get important chipsets. Um, continued and increased hostility between the two countries uh, would seem to be more the rule than the exception. I just think that's an important relationship to keep an eye on as we wonder and, and, and talk about life after the virus. Oh, boy, you have a right, David. At one point, I was thinking, when you go back in your history during the, uh, the New Deal, uh, things got restarted, and then in 37, the Fed jacked up rates, and things went right back. But the, but the actual real recovery that happened was only because of World War II and the incredible building that we had to do. I keep thinking about this book, Ghost Fleet, a novel of the next World War, which is when the Chinese figured out how to be able to jam our Navy. Uh, and, uh, again, that was a, a novel. But I do think that it wouldn't be wrong to be thinking about what the Defense Department's doing here, what's going on in terms of the fact that are we going to be a second-rate nation versus the Chinese? Is anyone willing to talk about that, or is that just too dangerous? Because I think if they're back 100%, and we're, t we're not, then, you know, I don't... I think it's... Remember the Belt and Road Initiative? They'll be back. They'll be funding all, companies, all the countries that were thought of as our allies. I'm quite concerned that this is a Chinese power play right here. And I know that the guy in the administration, Peter Navarro, is the guy who's most uh, concerned about that. He's caught up in some memo that he did or didn't send that said good things or bad things. But I, I, don't, I don't know. I mean, Carl, I'm looking at it and thinking, did the, Chinese in, did the Chinese in three months become the number one power in the world? Uh, after a month in which they uh, finally signed a trade deal that they dragged their heels on for a year? I, I, I mean, these are questions that are impossible to answer, Jim. But speaking yeah. of power plays, um, we're, I know you were talking oil with, uh, with Joe prior to the, the show this morning, and there's another discussion about who wins there. Did the Saudis win? Uh, what do the Russians really want? What's going to happen tomorrow? There's uh, five, the Canadians are getting $5 per barrel for Western crude. $5. Uh, that would mean that ultimately maybe we're going to get zero dollars. And yet the oil companies are trading up. I mean, the market is so funny. The market acts, it's up 20 percent for the bottom. The market acts as we're about to uh, have opening day. And now we're, we're thinking about having an opening day, according to ESPN, in Phoenix. And all games played in Phoenix. That's a terrific idea if you lived in Phoenix. Uh, but we're, we're sitting here watching interest rates go high and buy stocks going up again. And I don't know, there's a curious disconnect between when you speak to the companies, most of which are closed, and uh, what's going on in the market today. And I, I find it, I, I keep thinking maybe the market knows something we don't. Uh, maybe they know of, uh, of an antiviral. I mean, David, they, they, you, know, you got to admit, you, uh, the, you do have to think that the market knows something that we don't know, the collective wisdom. I mean, I spoke to Dave Tepper yesterday, and we're both kind of marveling. Yeah. Jeez, it's been bullish. Why? I, listen.